Ellen Dent, reporting live for JaneUnchained.com. We are out here with the first LA Save Chapter, Fish Save Chapters Vigil at a fish market in San Pedro. This is Hannah. She's one of the organizers. spending their Saturday morning here at this fish market and uh, they are here to just spread awareness of what happens with fish you know how overfishing is hurting our environment how fish are sentient creatures so we're going to talk to a, uh, bit, a couple of these activists about why they're here Jeannie board member of Animal Lines Network. Why are you here today? Um, well, as Hannah and Bernie um, stated earlier, is that um, fish are often the most forgotten animals and they have no voice and we can't hear their cries. So, I mean, we're here to raise awareness, you know, as well as, you know, the toxicity of consuming fish. You know, all of that plastic, it's, it's not good for us. So we're here to raise awareness and make a change. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dini. Thank you for being here. Yeah. See what your sign says. It's not about you. Cool. And that's a sign by Lee, who's a 369 Love Vegan, L-O-V-E-G-A-N. On Instagram, he makes these signs. Very cool. Thank you. Jason, why are you here today? I'm here to stand up and speak up for the fish that cannot and that are looking past. Um, yeah, and just for all the others, that's pretty much it. Yeah, be here. It just raise awareness, right? Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Hi. Lori, why are you here today? To spread awareness for the fish. Um, there's a lot of people that come here and they eat fish and I don't think they actually think about the before, you know, what happens before and it ends up on their plate. So, yeah. Exactly. Spreading awareness. Spreading awareness. Hoping people will change their minds about hopefully eating fish, right? Question. Yeah. Questions. yeah. Exactly. Why are you here? She, she brought you here. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Love it. Love it when families come out. <laughs> very good. Very good. Thank you. So, Brandy, I definitely want to talk to you. Uh, so, can you tell the Jane viewers uh, what we're here doing today? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're here. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, okay. we have a lot of live sentient creatures inside that are having their last breath of life. Some of them, we have live lobsters, live crabs, and what we're here doing is to bear witness, um, do our best to help anybody that comes here, give them as much information as we can, and kind of raise their consciousness of what's happening and 
to raise their awareness of what, what we need to do and just be more vocal for the voices that can't speak up for themselves. Exactly. Have you been inside of this fish market? Today was my first day. Okay, so um, you did go inside of the fish market. I, I just went in there um, a few, um, 30 minutes ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's intense. You know, we 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 look at so many animals. I mean, as far as being a vegan and being in the community of activism and pig vigils and chicken and cows and being able to see these animals is a it's a different it's a different story and it's a different emotion that comes out so it's, it's intense wow okay awesome can you can you tell us a little bit about what fish endure when they are fished yeah um to go to just a one point as far as specifically here when i was talking to the one of the workers is that these fish are coming from everywhere. Not that it matters where they're coming from, but um, factory fishing is, is a real thing. Um, and that's the majority of the fish that are actually here. Um, their last seconds of life, they're suffocating, they're dying. Um, you, you witness, you see. Um, Bobby, you want to give him a few looking over here. Yeah, and they're passing out pamphlets too um, to help spread more awareness of what's yeah, happening no. here. To the youth. Terrible suffocation in the last seconds of their life that is hurting. So um, yeah, they suffocate outside of the water, right? Yeah, and and many times they're kept on ice and and are still living even at that point, well off, well past their time of being out of water, which is a pain and terrible death. So not to mention the lobsters and crabs that are boils 20 plus minutes um, I was speaking with one of the workers here and it takes about 20 minutes to, to fully cook one of the lobsters so to try to put yourself in that perspective and to be boiled alive and to be suffocating is tough and again what we're doing here we're not here to protest um, we understand that you know workers have a job but you know it may take sometimes being here and being a voice to just get them to start thinking more critically about what they do and more logically so yeah bobby Muir said so they're kept on ice still living yeah yeah, yeah so they're still alive in there so you saw yeah, you still, animals you still, that were you still alive will see them alive yeah so you uh, see them alive in specifically, there specifically uh this this uh this market is a little different than my other markets you may come across i mean one of the big influences i've seen was in san diego where we actually have the um, yeah, san diego animal save is there's a live fish market with fishermen there and all their uh, fish laid out from the sea right there that they're selling. So you see a lot more of that. However, it's not too different from here. So yeah, I encourage anybody to follow LA Animal, uh, LA Animal Save, but also LA Fish Save. Mm -hmm. And to, um, to join us, we will be, be trying to do this bi-weekly. And, um, and yeah, keep this you updated, so check out the new page that we just created for it. Wonderful. So this is the newest chapter of the Save correct. Event in Southern California, correct? correct? Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you yeah. for organizing this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for spreading awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and you guys. Yeah, thanks for being out here. So you guys are going to do more of these vigils, right? Yeah, the goal is bi-weekly. Bi bi-weekly. Bi-weekly vigils, everybody. So follow LA Fish Save yeah. on Facebook and on Instagram. Instagram. And they will give you more details for the next one. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Hey, there's some familiar faces over here at just about every vigil. We got Anna and Brian at Those Annoying Vegans on Instagram. And uh, can uh, you two just take a turn and uh, let me know what you're doing out here today for Jane Unchained? Uh, yeah, we're at the very first ever um, LA fish save vigil. So we're bearing witness to the animals inside this fish market. Uh, we were in there earlier. We saw plenty of dead animals, lots and lots and lots of them on ice, but also plenty of alive animals that are just in there waiting to be killed. Uh, so we're just out here talking to people if they care to talk to us. And um, someone did. We just had a conversation with one of the fishermen. And, uh, it, you know, it's so important to uh, listen. You know, sometimes we forget to listen and to ask them about themselves. You know, so tell me, like, what do you do? Are you, are you local? What kind of fish do you, you know, because that gives us an opportunity to learn more. And luckily, we had a very pleasant, calm conversation. He was obviously very skeptical, um, but it's so much better than, than going on the defensive and, uh, and trying to prove our point. 
you know, so we feel it's important to exercise, uh, you know, the Socratic method. We love to use that in our outreach and ask questions, turn everything they say into a question, which forces them to come up with their own answer. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're here to do. So hopefully open some minds and hearts. And uh, we just sent, Bobby just handed a pamphlet to one this little boy who showed an interest. You never yeah. Know. Yeah, reaching out to the youth out here too. They have these awesome signs. Can you guys tell us what you do for LA Animal Save? Yeah, we're coordinators with the LA Animal Save and we host the chicken vigil every other week. And then in the in-between weeks, we host the cow vigil. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you both for being here and being just about at every vigil I think I've ever been to. So you guys are troopers. Thank you so much. And sure. if you want, if you want uh, information about any of the safe vigils, you can always follow us at, at Those Annoying Vegans or at LA Animal Safe. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you both. See you soon. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Hi Bobby. Bobby is also at just about every vigil I go to, probably, probably everyone. And uh, he does photography and filming at the vigils to raise awareness uh, for what's happening to animals and these farm situations especially. Uh, so Bobby, can you tell us why you're out here today? Bobby said. Well, uh, like I'm sure everybody, the same reason, you know, we're out here to spread awareness about the, uh, the truth about the commercial fishing industry and that just like every other animal, fish feel pain. In fact, I would imagine that it's, well, I would say that it's more painful for fish because they lack adrenaline. Human beings, we get hurt. Mammals, they get hurt. Our body produces adrenaline so that we can deal with it before it becomes a problem. It makes us experience less pain until everything calms down. They don't have that, so they feel everything. You know? uh, and I think that people love those comfortable lies. Fish don't feel pain, you know, they, they don't think. All these things that, I, I think it, at, at the heart, most people really don't believe, you know, but it's so much easier to, it's so much more comfortable to believe. Yeah, they don't have vocal cords. Not only, yeah. that, well, at least not that they do make yeah. sounds, but not that we can hear. Yeah. Um, and I think what's what's so difficult for people to relate to fish, or what makes it so difficult, is that first they're kind of alien looking. Uh, they live in an alien world, a world alien to us. Literally, we cannot survive in there. Okay, they're, they are very far, you know, very separated as far as way of life. But they have, they can't show expression on their face. You know, and, and I think that, that that's really unfortunate for them because I think that if they if they could show pain on their face, that, that it would be easier for people to accept. But they have a single expression. You know? mm -hmm. so, yeah, absolutely. Which is why people think sharks are, are mean because they, they have the big jagged teeth and they, they have black eyes and they show no emotion. They don't show it. Just yeah. They don't have it. And I think that when people say, well, we don't know. It's like, okay, so, well, if you don't know, aren't the stakes a little high for you to just go ahead and do it? I mean, too terrible it would be to be wrong, don't you think? If, if you don't know if they can feel pain, why do it assuming that you are probably right, that they don't? Like, I would say abstain when it costs you nothing to do so. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can uh, prevent their suffering, yeah. prevent the damage that's being done to our environment. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah do you want to talk only, a little yeah. bit about that? Well, I mean, not, yeah, exactly. Not only it doesn't cost us anything, we, we gain so much. Um, and we are literally vacuuming up the oceans. For, for, for every one pound of uh, fish that we catch that ends up in these markets, there's five pounds that is just wasted. Literally just dies on the dock. And that includes porpoises, dolphins, whales, sharks, squid, uh, and the problem with things like, well, let's say shark finning, even though it's illegal in the United States, it happens all the time, we're literally, literally killing 100 million sharks a year. It's 11,000 sharks an hour. And the problem with that is that the trickle-down effect on symbiosis in the, in the ocean is very extreme, because everything is living together. Uh, say if, like in, uh, Sea of Cortez out here off of the California Peninsula. There are these giant squid called Humboldt squid. They're about eight feet, and they're hyper aggressive uh, when they're mating or when they're when they're hungry. And they and they, they they are cannibals, but they will eat eat literally anything. Now their only predator for the Humboldt squid is a shark. So if we empty the ocean of sharks, we have this massive aggressive predator called the Humboldt squid that is literally going to vacuum everything up. Mm. But we just assume, well, you know, 
Mm -hmm. So we don't have those fish who cares, you know? But yeah, everything literally affects everything. It's a delicate ecosystem yeah, in the ocean. Extremely. I mean, look what how easy it is to destroy the coral reef. I mean, the coral, coral bleaching is happening everywhere just because it got one or two degrees hotter in the ocean. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. It's amazing that people just assume, well, if there's a catastrophe, it won't happen when I'm here. You know, it's a, it won't happen to me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, we have a, a regular on here, Bobby Mirror, and he's asked, he's asking how many animals are killed during harvesting of vegetables and grains for vegan food. <laughs> have you heard this one before? No, I have not. No? Are we talking about bugs? Like I don't. What is the question? Um, he's he's saying like when we're harvesting, like what? How many get stuck inside the plow? I think he's kind of trolling on here, but is it, oh, it's see, an interesting like question. Birds and things like yeah, that yeah, it. and like moles well, okay, okay, and rabbits. So, uh, I'm guessing the question is coming. Let's say that question is coming from a place of concern for animals. Yeah. If that is your if that is your position, I would imagine that you would think that factory farming is a million times worse, which it is. So billions times billions worse. Billions times worse. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you know, people say you know the, the you know plants feel pain. Okay. Let's say for the sake of argument that plants feel pain. Wouldn't you want to be vegan then? Because the meat that you're eating eats an extremely higher amount of, of plants than you do. It takes far more food than you can eat to raise a cow. In fact, it takes it's 25 to 1. It's 25 calories in for a, of grain that a cow will eat for one calorie of meat that we get. So when people in the United States say, well, you know, overproduce or producing more vegetables causes food waste, they claim that food waste is 40% in the United States. Which is incorrect. Food waste is actually closer to 800 to 2500 percent food waste in the United States because it takes nine calories of grain to get one calorie of chicken. It takes 25 calories of grain to get one uh, calorie of beef. Why not just eat 25 calories of grain? Yeah. Literally, if you eat 2500 calories of grain, that's an entire day's worth of calories versus 100 calories of meat. Yeah, so animals are dying to feed the meat, yeah. even. So that's like that compounds the issue. Yeah. Yeah, good question, Bobby. One, one of the good ones there. Um, Bobby Mirror, and thank you, Bobby Sud, for being here, as always. And yeah. thank you. We can't wait to see your projects. Um, do you have anything coming out soon? Um, well, no, I, mean, I was just working on the Million Dollar Vegan campaign, and then uh, hopefully Sean and I get started on the, the documentary again. Yeah, so, Sean Munson. Sean he Munson, works with yeah. Sean Munson. Yeah, yeah Bobby Sud works with John, Sean Munson. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, um, they can follow you uh, at, at Bobby Sud. Yes. At Bobby said on Instagram for more of his work, he gets really amazing pictures at the vigils, Thank you. and uh, you know he's got a lot of stuff that he's doing. A busy man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Bobby. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we come over here. We got people oh, all the way over here. Hello. Hi. So we have to take a peek over here for a second. We'll talk to some more activists. Yeah, so we got people coming over here on a Saturday morning to get fish, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can talk to some of them. We did have a few people come over earlier and just ask what we were doing. alive and the guy working there said that it takes between 10 and 15 minutes for them to die which is just really really sad so just out here raising awareness absolutely thank you Hannah thank yeah, you so thank much you. for being here and, and you're passing out pamphlets yes, to people yeah, as they walk by people. yeah have a lot of people taking the pamphlets yeah yeah and hopefully you know people who take them make a connection you know you never yeah know. yeah hopefully they read it you plant exactly, the seed exactly. you can definitely yeah. plant the seed during that yeah how hard do you think it would be to walk in there to walk out, we just did walk in there earlier. Did you? I think you can just walk fine. right yeah, in. We just walked right in. We took photos, live streamed in there. What do you guys think? Should we walk I in there? We should. should we walk in there? Does anybody want to come with me? I'll go with you. In case I get beat up by the security. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a closer look. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to come? Okay.
And you have with the, ch- the chicken vigils, right, in Long that, Beach? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Long Beach Animal Safe. Uh, yeah. We, we, we hold vigils at the PCH, at the poultry counter, uh, because the chickens are brought in to slaughter on site. Wonderful. So, so we're just going to take a little quick peek inside of here. Everybody stay tuned. Just going to take a little quick peek. I should trick my feet to, like, you know, not, inside not inside of here. If we just walk around and observe, people will throw assumptions at us, we'll see. Yeah, oh, it's in here? Okay, yes, please guide us. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. I've yeah, never yeah, been here before. No, so We're just going to take a quick peek inside of here. Following Hannah. Uh, These are the victims. Yeah, yeah, so this is the fish here. And you can see they are on the ice. It's the size of a si- size from the size dog. Oh, you can? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go take a peek. Hopefully this video doesn't get taken down. <laughs> so you can see the, the fish is on ice in here. And uh, lots of different varieties. We've got some crabs over here. I'm going to try to pan down a little so everybody can see. We've got the crabs. We've got like a giant head of the fish over Does- here. Does it occur to people that this is rather grisly? I mean, right here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's gonna be Yeah, the fact that people yeah. think that that looks delicious is um, alarming. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of different ways to get healthy brain food. Bobby Mayer, one of the commenters on here. You can eat some nuts instead. How about some walnuts instead? Instead of all this suffering. How about some walnuts? I'm looking to see. Let me know if you guys see anything that's still alive. So over here they do the preparation over here. You can see that they're preparing. That's our activists over here. Yeah, so all different varieties of fish inside of this market. And all on ice. Um, I mean you can just imagine being pulled under the water. It's even and, uh, into our language. Think yeah. about how often different phrases we have that relate the size of a catch to victory. You know, like uh, I felt so good. I like I felt like I caught a three hundred pound trap. You know, uh, the bigger the fish, the uh, greater the conquest. And it's, yeah, absolutely. And Bobby Mayer, again, you can get that uh, that brain food and that good oil from algae. There's no need to. Uh, to eat these fish, there's no need to eat their oil. Um, for when I used to eat, it was a bit funky, anyways. So I didn't, I didn't really like the taste of it. Bobby, mess up your shot. Be careful not to get too many faces in here. Here they have over here. We can wonder how many of these these fish, how many of how much of this food will be wasted. Because it's doubtful that it'll be bought in time for people to eat it. So it makes you wonder. And this is this is part of our problem here. The ocean is being overfished, and scientists say that by 2048 there will not be fish to fish anymore. And it's all because people eat fish. Okay. I think we're going to go back out here with the activists. And we got the activists in there taking pictures, checking everything out. People are making their selections. Part of the problem, we're going to go back outside with the activists. Kind of like an amusement park thing. Taking a tour. Taking a tour. But uh, fish are sentient creatures. They feel pain. They have a brain. They have pain receptors. They have a spine. And uh, 
they feel every bit of that pain and it's a highly painful death that they experience. So I guess they have like a little restaurant back here. Just pan around and give you guys like a kind of peek at this over here. So people are out here eating next to uh, this a pier, the pier? Yeah. Yeah, this is the pier out over here. People over here eating, big food court type, eating quite a bit of fish. I think that's probably what they serve mostly over here. And yeah, this is what people do on a Saturday afternoon. Can you? Yeah. Can, can you show us that? You, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna head back inside and uh, we're gonna take a look and see if we can see any uh, animals being put in the pot alive. that they were talking about earlier. and chemicals does not help them. Does not help the ocean at all. Yes. They are alive. And where, where are they boiling them? Are they boiling them in that big trough over there? Yeah, and in here. They're being boiled in yeah. here? Yeah, it takes 10 to 15 minutes to do a slow boil. This is a slow boiling yeah. tank. Okay, according to Hannah, this is a slow boiling tank. And it takes about 15 minutes? 10 to 15. 10 yeah, to 15 minutes? Yeah, that's important you guys here. Okay, so these, these animals are boiling alive right now inside of this tank. They're boiling alive. No, sorry, not one. Not oh, one. not okay. this one. Okay, yeah, yeah. back here. Okay, okay, they're slow boiling them back here. Correction, back there where you see that steam coming out, they're slow boiling them. And these are the, the crabs and lobsters that are waiting to go back oh, there. Yeah. yeah, so when they're selected, probably. Are they yeah. selected? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when somebody comes in and selects one of these crabs and they, or, or lobsters, then they may put them back there in the boiling water after they're selected. So uh, they have several tanks here. Several tanks. Thank you, hands up, mess it up. 
Maybe you yeah. want to go like, ride down the mountain on a bike, like stable bike. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe they did work for right Like a GoPro. Yeah, that would be good. So, can you tell me, do customers, do they, they pick out the lobsters here? Yes. I don't have you on camera. They um, definitely pick out yeah, crab they pick and lobster out. here. Okay. And then we'll oh. cook them for you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so they pick them out, and then you guys put them back there in that boiling uh, tank back there. Oh, wow. So that's a spider crab? Yes. Spiders, yeah. local lobsters, main lobsters. But the most, we have, we have a lot of these right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. And do you know where those came from? These came from California? From California. Okay, wow. Five miles out. Oh, five miles out, okay. And they go with the nuts. Yeah, traps. Okay, so Actually, they're they accidentally caught. We don't yeah. target them. We fish, they fish lobster, and then like, these like, go into lots of traps. Oh, wow. So these are accidentally caught. They're a uh, product wow. of Fly Pack. They're a product of Fly Pack? Yes. Okay. So these, these uh, spider lobsters are uh, actually caught. We got one that's, you know, trying to get out of there. You can't blame them. But people get them, right? They do. Okay. They are. They are good. They're just not as, like, expensive, I guess. Now you're trying to catch the lobster when these guys get caught. Okay. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah, me neither. That's interesting. Yeah, so they pick them out. And then if I can pan up really quickly, you'll see them. Bagging, yeah. back here. So that that lot or that crab has been. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that. Right now. Yeah. Look at that. Right now. Really, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're getting picked out. <laughs> Can we go out that way? Uh, yeah. Let's go out that way. Thank you. Okay, well we had a good run in there. We had a good run. We got a lot of good Yeah. Run. That's interesting. They have a lot going on in there. Uh, yeah. 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 Have Have you two been in there? Yeah. yeah. yeah we went in there okay. Yeah. What was your What was your reaction to seeing? So many beautiful fish lines just ruined. Yeah. It's it's you like to say you know fish are killed in such high numbers that they're not measured in individuals like we say oh. the number we estimate it's around two trillion marine animals that get killed every year but you don't know i mean they drag the nets across the ocean floor and whatever they catch they catch if i could suggest too like for anyone out there who is questioning you know fish by fish uh, there is a great new york times article um right here called fish have feelings too and it just goes it's very it's quite comprehensive and it goes over all these self-awareness they passed the mirror test things like that and or watch blue planet too like if fish are incredible and they're intelligent and they and they they show empathy towards each other um, it's just a matter of you know exposing our, ourselves to information that we, we might have not exposed ourselves to yet yeah i was just telling brian like even uh five years ago when i went to santa barbara with a friend we where I was not vegan yet, I was vegetarian, and I was eating, we were eating on the dock at this restaurant where they were killing live lobsters in front of people, not by boiling them al alive, but by, like, using a, a, some kind of, what do you call the, like a, like a cleaver, and I, I was horrified by it, and I said, no, I'm going to have the shrimp instead. You know, we, yeah. we, I didn't even think of it back then, how hypocritical that was. Yeah, so you connected with one, one of the ocean creatures, but then, you know, thought it was okay to eat the other one because they didn't die that same death. Exactly. Yeah. Or in front of me. Yeah, or in front of yeah. you. Ex absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both for your input on that. Um, yeah, very powerful. Thank you. So I'm just going to 
and pan through the activists one more time. Great job inside, Hannah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, pan through the activists. So anybody want to say hi to Jane? Jane, hi. Jane viewers. Hi. Yeah, oh. yeah, Jane Velez Mitchell, hey. Jane and Jane. Yeah, hi, hi, we got Janelle over here. Janelle, what are you doing here today? I'm just here trying to spread awareness and trying to just let people know what's actually going on. Yeah, yeah check out that sign. All fishing is overfishing, right? Yeah. Uh, earlier I said that uh, scientists are saying that the fish uh, will be overfished. By 2048, there will be no fish left to fish. It's true. Yeah, of the species that we will be eating. We need to reduce everything like everything that we're doing it just needs to stop and everyone just needs to come to the realization that we're at like our world is at stake you know yeah if we destroy our oceans what's gonna happen we're gonna be gone <laughs> yeah exactly this is a delicate Bye. ecosystem and uh, we are pulling it apart yes. thank you Janelle of have four-legged activist down here that's Blake. It's Penny's dog. Hi Blake. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sign off now. You know but for anybody wondering, uh, dolphins are the second smartest animal in the animal kingdom. It's elephants and then dolphins. So behind humans, elephants and dolphins. So um, it tells you kind of the level of intelligence that can be found in the oceans, the level of sentience. And hopefully one day, you know, with enough awareness spread by these wonderful people, this uh, practice will end. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Ellen Dent reporting live for Jane Unchained News Network. And we hope to see you all soon. Have a wonderful Saturday.